Using the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomers from the Canadian NIRISS Unbiased Cluster Survey Team discovered the most distant globular clusters yet observed. These tight clusters of millions of stars might be remnants of the universe's first and oldest stars. What has the JWST just uncovered? And what impact would this discovery have on everything? Stay tuned as we bring you this fascinating discovery made by the James Webb Space Telescope, which might also contain the universe's first star. The first science quality image from NASA's newest space telescope discovered a hidden treasure in the shape of a sparkling faraway galaxy surrounded by dense clusters that might contain some of the universe's first stars. That image, the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST's first deep field image, displayed a breathtaking array of galaxies. A group of Canadian astronomers have focused their attention on a galaxy 9 billion light years away from Earth, nicknamed the Sparkler Galaxy, because the compact objects around it look as little dazzling yellow red specks. The galaxy is notable for its unusual stretched appearance, but the surrounding objects that inspired the nickname are of considerable scientific importance since they may be the most distant globular clusters of stars yet discovered by astronomers. What exactly are globular clusters? Globular clusters are groups of old stars that were there when a galaxy first formed. As a result, they can provide information on the early phases of galactic formation, development and evolution. The Canadian NIRISS Unbiased Cluster Survey Canuck's team examined the 12 compact objects that surrounded the Sparkler Galaxy and determined that five of them are in fact globular clusters. Furthermore, they could be among of the earliest globular clusters ever observed, possibly existing when the cosmos first began to birth stars. As the study's co-lead author and an astronomer at the University of Toronto in Canada, Karthik G. Iyer remarked in an interview it was really surprising to us that we were able to find such a unique object so early on in the JWST data. According to our analyst, we found that most of these sparkles around the main body of the galaxy are really massive and really old stellar systems. According to Aya, the JWST image allowed the team to study the sparkles throughout a range of wavelengths allowing the researchers to precisely model the clusters in order to learn more about their physical characteristics such as their age and the number of stars they contain. Before JWST, it was impossible to date the first stars in far-off early galaxies using such distant globular clusters. In an interview, Lamaya Mola, an astronomer at the University of Toronto and also a co-author of the study, said, what we're trying to do is we're trying to age date all the objects in the universe, the stars, the galaxies and the globular clusters, because we want to know when is it that stars started to be born. There are thought to be 150 globular clusters in the Milky Way, although their ages are unknown. While it is very simple to age date the majority of objects in our galaxy, this isn't the case for especially ancient objects, which already seem old when viewed up close and hence more recently in time, according to Moller. It is considerably simpler to date farther off clusters like the Sparkler Galaxy, which astronomers see as they were 9 billion years ago, when the cluster was much younger and the universe was just 4.5 billion years old. Think of globular clusters aging like humans do, Moller said. Aging globular clusters in the Milky Way is like looking at a picture trying to say if a person is 50 years old or if this person is a 55 year old, she said. It's easier to tell if somebody is 5 years old or if they are 10 years old. It's even easier to tell if they are a 1 year old or if they are a 6 year old. Furthermore, since the globular clusters that encircled the Sparkler Galaxy are being observed as they were 9 billion years ago, they appear to be very young making it easier to estimate their age like looking at an infant's picture rather than that of a middle-aged individual. Using the information from the Near Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph NIRISS or NIRIS instrument on the JWST which was developed in Canada, the astronomers were able to further validate the age of the clusters. The oxygen that is often linked to young clusters that are actively forming stars was not detected by NIRIS. 
the Hubble Space Telescope, which had previously viewed the galaxy but was unable to discern the globular clusters around it and a natural phenomenon known as gravitational lensing, assisted the JWST in its observation of the Sparkler Galaxy. Was this a helping hand from general relativity? Einstein's general theory of relativity made the first prediction about gravitational lensing in 1915 and it has since developed into a useful tool for astronomers. According to general relativity, massive objects cause the space-time continuum to bend. Consider this to be similar to dropping balls of increasing mass onto a stretched rubber sheet. The more mass present, the more dent or curve is produced. This curvature causes the light's path through space to be bent. Extreme foreground lensing objects can magnify or appear in multiple locations in an image, making the background object that is the source of this light look much larger. Gravitational lensing is responsible for the Sparkler Galaxy's unusual stretched appearance, as well as magnifying it sufficiently for JWST to detect it. The effect also causes some of the surrounding clusters to appear at various spots in the JWST deep field image. The magnification and many images created by gravitational lensing not only aided in the study of these objects, but also confirmed that these clusters do really orbit the Sparkler Galaxy and are not just overlaid on top of it in JWST's line of sight. One of the outstanding mysteries surrounding the Sparkler Galaxy is the extent to which the foreground lensing object, the SMAX 0723 galaxy cluster, magnifies it. The magnification of the Sparkler galaxy and its surroundings is not as well constrained as we'd like, Aya said. So one of the things we want to do is build a better magnification model so that we can figure out whether it's enlarged by a factor of 10 or by a factor of 100. Understanding how much the Sparkler galaxy and its clusters are amplified might help in more precisely determining features like as its age and distance from Earth. In addition, the Canucks team will use the JWST telescope in October to explore five enormous clusters of galaxies where they anticipate to uncover additional systems like the Sparkler galaxy. We hope the knowledge that globular clusters can be observed at from such great distances with the JWST will spur further science and searches for similar objects, Aya said. How has the James Webb Space Telescope impacted astronomy? Astronomers and space enthusiasts alike have been anticipating the publication of JWST's initial images. Some of Aya's Canucks colleagues didn't sleep the night the deep field image was revealed and Moller reflected on the excitement of the night and how swiftly the search for key cosmic objects began. The big reveal came from NASA in the evening, and the next day the whole Canucks collaboration were together looking at this image together, Moller said. Then we saw this weirdly shaped highly lensed system, she added. Even in the colour image, this thing pops out and there are these star clusters like these little dots that you don't see in other galaxies. The discovery of such distant globular clusters in JWST's first deep field image exemplifies how the telescope is continuing to provide outstanding results while altering astronomy's future, they added. The duo is referring to the fact that while the Sparkler Galaxy and its globular companions are far enough away to be seen when the universe was only about 4 billion years old, this is still relatively close given that the JWST was designed to see galaxies hundreds of millions of years after the Big Bang. We are getting data that is deeper than we anticipated, which is quite surprising in the most beautiful way, Moller said. And for Moller, an early career researcher, the timing couldn't be better. It's an incredible time for us as young astronomers who are just starting out, she added. People have been waiting for this telescope for so long so we feel incredibly lucky to have this telescope right at the beginning of our careers. The researchers also plan to utilise JWST to investigate distant globular clusters in order to gain a better understanding of how these objects develop in general. There are now two channels that are preferred. The first is that these clusters formed during the cosmic dawn, when the cosmos was only starting to form stars and galaxies, or as the second route suggests, did globular clusters form mostly during cosmic noon, when the majority of stars in galaxies formed? If the globular clusters in Sparkler are really old like we think they are, says Moller, then the answer will be that most globular clusters were formed at the dawn and not at the noon. However, in order to provide more solid answers, 
the team hopes to take a second look at the Sparkler Galaxy to collect a more detailed spectrum. And perhaps more importantly, they want to utilize JWST to look at five additional gravitationally lensed fields to see whether any other sparkler-like galaxies containing globular clusters can be spotted. Then the researchers hope they'll be able to definitively say which formation path globular clusters favor. Let's hear what you think about sparkler galaxy in the comments section below. Subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed watching this video.